Reunited by the loss of a childhood friend, a group discovers a treasure hunt hidden in their old treehouse, prompting them to embark on an adventure to honor their friend's memory. A home movie is playing, depicting the adventures of four childhood friends. The footage shows them constructing a fort called Fort Cooper. After their high school graduation, lifelong friends Tom, Dan, and Jerry bid farewell to Billy, who is leaving town to start a new journey. As Billy is about to leave, Jerry hands him his old compass in case he gets lost. Fast forward 10 years and they've grown up and taken different paths in life. Tom, despite getting older, hasn't matured. On the other hand, Jerry is now in the corporate world and goes surfing after work, an activity he passionately enjoys. After surfing, he heads home to his girlfriend, Denise. He forgets that it's their anniversary and gets into an argument with her. During this, the surfer receives a surprising phone call from his mother. Meanwhile, Dan is a successful doctor with his own practice. At his clinic, he receives a phone call from Jerry, who informs him about Billy's death. They both agree to attend their friend's funeral. At the funeral, many people express their sorrow over Billy's passing and reflect on his accomplishments. However, the solemn atmosphere is disrupted when Tom arrives on a motorcycle, attracting the attention of the mourners. Insensitively, he begins shouting if he's at the correct funeral until Jerry calls him over. Following the funeral, they decide to visit Fort Cooper, a place filled with memories from their childhood. There, they recall their fascination with D.B. Cooper, the infamous plane hijacker who successfully extorted a plane and made a daring escape using a parachute. During their exploration, Jerry uncovers their D.B. Cooper-inspired time capsule from years ago. They open it and discover that Billy had been secretly adding to it over the years. Among the childhood mementos is a map with detailed instructions, pinpointing where Billy believes Cooper may have landed. Jerry realizes that Billy had intended for them to take this journey together, but they had missed the opportunity due to their busy lives. Now, the surfer insists that they follow Billy's treasure map as a way to honor their friend's memory. However, Dan is against the idea, concerned about his responsibilities and commitments. Jerry emphasizes that this might be their last chance to go on an adventure together. Eventually, despite Dan's reservations, the trio solidify their commitment with a blood oath, just like in their childhood. Before long, the friends set off, heading towards the Oregon Mountains searching for D.B. Cooper's treasure. Their first destination is Cataldo Mills, where they plan to stock up on supplies and gather information about acquiring a canoe. There, Jerry searches for a phone to call Denise, and Dan lends him his new satellite phone. During the call, the surfer reveals their treasure hunt in the mountains, but Denise reacts negatively and hangs up. As they prepare to leave, Sheriff Briggs approaches them, inquiring about their destination. Dan discloses their plans, but Jerry intervenes, providing a fake itinerary instead. The sheriff cautions them about the dangers of the wilderness, but Tom confidently boasts that he's a certified whitewater guide, assuring the sheriff that they'll be fine. The trio continues their journey, renting a canoe from a local. When asked about his guide classification, Tom bluffs through the conversation. With the canoe secured, they set off. Their progress is smooth and they soon pass their first landmark, Grandpa's Nose. As night falls, Dan insists on starting a fire traditionally, prompting Tom to blast him with alcohol, igniting the sparks. While gathered around the fire, Tom boasts about making banks selling motorcycles, and Jerry confides his reservations regarding starting a family, expressing his desire to spend his day surfing instead. After toasting to Billy and reminiscing about Dan's ex-girlfriend, Tom notices their dinner of Soylent and decides to fish salmon using a flashlight. Dan bets $100,000 and his prized possession, doubting Tom's skills. To their surprise, he succeeds multiple times. Their celebration is short-lived as their commotion attracts a bear. Mistaking Dan for its cub, the bear kidnaps him and carries him to its den. While the bear is out gathering food, the trio quickly climb a tree to escape the bear's reach. They spend the night perched on the branches while the bear ravages their campsite, devouring Dan's satellite phone in the process. The following morning, the bear is scared off by nearby explosions caused by Dennis and Elwood, who are dynamite fishing in the area. Spotting the rednecks, Dan suggests they set off from a different section of the river to avoid them, unknowingly causing them to miss a crucial fork in their route. Tom, their navigator, attempts to make do with the torn map and mistakenly assures them that they're heading in the correct direction. Soon, they find themselves in rapids that they can't handle, resulting in their canoe overturning. Fortunately, Jerry's surfing skills come to the rescue as he lassos Dan and pulls him to safety. Despite their relief at surviving the ordeal, their joy is short-lived as they're soon swept down a waterfall, destroying their canoe. Tensions rise as they realize that Tom's claimed whitewater experience was limited to a water park. The liar quickly shifts the blame onto Dan, accusing him of causing them to miss the crucial fork in the river. 
The doctor defends himself by pointing out that Jerry was responsible for navigation, prompting the surfer to argue that the bear tore their map. Dan suggests giving up and returning home, while Tom dismisses the idea, stating that climbing up the waterfall and swimming upstream isn't an option. Suddenly, Jerry finds a glimmer of hope when they stumble upon the contents of their time capsule, including Billy's old compass. His excitement quickly diminishes when he realizes that the compass is useless without a map to guide them, which was lost in the rapids. While trying to find their way back, the trio stumbles upon an encampment. They cautiously approach the camp, only to discover that it belongs to the rednecks they encountered earlier. Regretting their decision, they turn back, but their movements draw attention. While hiding, they stumble upon a storehouse filled with pot, revealing that Dennis and Elwood are actually illicit farmers. The friends try to sneak away but get caught by dogs, alerting Dennis and Elwood who rain bullets on them. To escape, they break through the storehouse and run into the pot field. Along the way, they accidentally trigger a trap, causing flares to light up the sky. As the flares descend, they ignite the plants, filling the air with happy fumes. Everyone except for Dennis and Elwood gets high as a kite. While running and hallucinating a vision of Billy, the trio stumbles into a marsh. They decide to hide underwater, using reeds to breathe. However, Dan's reed becomes blocked by a bug, causing him to release bubbles that catch Elwood's attention. Thinking it's just a bullfrog, Dennis says not to waste ammunition and they leave in search of the intruders. As the sun rises, the trio continues to distance themselves from the rednecks. Back at the farm, Dennis is furious over the loss of their entire crop. Wanting to eliminate any witnesses, he convinces Elwood that they must hunt down the three intruders. Armed and determined, the two farmers set off in pursuit of the trio. As Dan tends to Tom's injury, Jerry apologizes for getting everyone involved in the ill-fated adventure. The surfer suggests that Tom, who supposedly earns a lot selling motorcycles, should buy them all a drink. However, Tom confesses that he's actually a compulsive liar with a betting addiction and mountains of debt. While opening about his vulnerabilities and fear of sarin wrap, Dan's phone starts ringing, interrupting their discussion. Startled, they follow the sound and come face to face with the bear once again. Shortly after, the rednecks spot the tracks left by the trio. Elsewhere, Tom climbs a tree, hoping to gain a better vantage point and get their bearings. However, what he sees are forest nymphs bathing in the distance, causing him to think he's still high. The trio follow Jerry's sighting and eventually reach the location where they encounter Flower and Butterfly, two environmentalists residing on top of a massive redwood tree dedicated to its preservation. The environmentalists invite them up and extend their hospitality, even washing their clothes. Dan finds himself drawn to Harry Flower and enjoys her company, while Tom receives a massage from Butterfly. Jerry learns that they use the radio to request supplies, but they're briefly distracted by Flower's dancing. Back to his wits, Jerry asks about the radio and Butterfly gives it to him using her feet. Jerry radios for assistance, with Flower providing their location. Unbeknownst to them, it is Dennis on the other end of the line, disguising his voice. The friends are elated at the prospect of being rescued. While waiting, Dan expresses the need to use the bathroom, but he's only given a paper bag and a pine cone for cleaning purposes. Understandably, he decides against using them. Shortly after, the friends hear people arriving, only to be alarmed when they discover it's the rednecks with a chainsaw. Jerry devises a plan to sneak down the opposite side of the tree and create a zipline for their escape. However, Tom insists on being the one to execute the plan and bravely slides down the tree, clad in minimal clothing. Meanwhile, Butterfly defends their home by throwing their used paper bags at them. As she bombs their assailants with excrement, Dan and Jerry make their getaway. Before parting ways, Flower gives Dan a farewell kiss. Afterwards, the underwear-clad trio flee on a stolen ATV. They make a desperate attempt to lose their pursuers but end up driving off a cliff and onto a river. Luckily, they manage to swim to safety. Frustrated by their harrowing ordeal, Dan reaches his breaking point and gives up. Tom and Jerry attempt to convince him to press on, saying his problems are all mental. Still, Dan is unwilling to continue, believing that things couldn't possibly get worse. However, just as he utters those words, it begins to rain. Concerned about hypothermia, the doctors suggest huddling together. Despite Jerry's reservations, they're forced to huddle together inside a nearby cave for warmth. While trying to sleep, Jerry reminisces about flowers dancing, getting a rise out of Dan and horrifying Tom. Tom airs his complaints, but their conversation is interrupted by the sudden appearance of an armed mountain man. The mountain man orders them to follow him, leading them to his cabin. Inside the cabin, the mountain man starts a fire, reassuring the trio that he has no intention of harming unclothed deviants on his mountain. Jerry, intrigued by the maps he notices, assumes that the mountain man is D.B. Cooper, saying the whole reason they're there is to look for his treasure. 
The mountain man provides them with some clothes and expresses his interest in hearing their story. Meanwhile, the rednecks continue their pursuit, arriving at the cave where the trio had taken shelter. Inside the cabin, the mountain man, Dell, reveals that he was D.B. Cooper's best friend. They'd planned to meet at a ridge and escape together. However, their plan was ruined by a blizzard, and despite staying on the mountain for 30 years, Dell never saw his best friend again. Regretful of spending his prime on the mountain, Dell imparts his wisdom to the trio, advising them not to waste their time. He emphasizes that while lost money can be recovered, lost time cannot. They go to sleep with Dell's wise words and wake up to breakfast. Jerry goes out to relieve himself and hears Dan's phone by the trees. Fortunately, there's no bear this time. He retrieves the phone and calls Denise. However, he receives the heartbreaking news that Denise has changed their answering machine message, insinuating a breakup. Before he can fully process his grief, the rednecks launch an attack on the cabin. In the face of danger, Dell provides the trio with instructions on how to descend the mountain using an old mining trail. Afterwards, he steps outside, outgunning Dennis and Elwood with his two pistols. Despite the instructions, the trio get lost because the compass is malfunctioning due to the iron in the hills. However, Jerry realizes that this situation would have also affected D.B. Cooper during his landing, leading him to believe that Cooper might have ended up somewhere in the same area. Just as he shares this insight, they all fall into a hole, discovering the remains of the infamous hijacker. Examining the scene, Dan concludes that Cooper's legs were likely broken during the landing, and he sought shelter in the hole. The surfer adds that when the blizzard hit and the hole became snowed in, Dell was unable to find him. Disappointingly, they find no treasure, as Cooper had burned the money to stay warm. Despite their failed treasure hunt, Jerry finds a valuable lesson in the experience. He realizes that the true treasures lies in living life to the fullest and using time wisely. After offering their childhood treasures as a tribute, they discover an exit from the hole. Jerry notices a crawl space that only Dan can fit through. While the doctor is passing through, he experiences a panic attack and the friends sing together to support him. Unfortunately, their singing attracts the attention of the rednecks, who follow the sound to the hole. Dennis and Elwood position themselves at the entrance, unaware that Dan is emerging nearby. Unexpectedly, the rednecks join in the singing, alerting Tom and Jerry of their presence. In a moment of bravery, just as Elwood is about to drop a grenade into the hole, Dan whacks them from behind with a tree branch, causing them to fall. Then, a scuffle ensues below. Dan suggests using the grenade, but everyone unanimously rejects the idea. He attempts to handle the guns, but the firepower proves too much for him. Remarkably, the city boys manage to hold their ground against the buff men long enough for the sheriff to arrive. They all climb out of the hole, thinking they're saved, but their relief is short-lived when Briggs reveals that he's the leader of the criminals. As the armed men corner the trio towards the cliff, Dan discreetly retrieves the discarded grenade. He passes the grenade to Jerry, who distracts the sheriff while closing the distance between them. Once he's close enough, the surfer activates the grenade, taking the aggressors by surprise. While Jerry negotiates with the sheriff, Elwood strikes him with his gun, causing the grenade to fall. In a moment of heroism, Jerry throws the grenade towards their attackers, but they narrowly avoid the explosion. Although the grenade doesn't hit its targets, they're ultimately crushed by a tree that was knocked down in the ensuing blast. After the criminals are apprehended, the trio is hailed as heroes. Amidst the media frenzy, Dell approaches them with a gift. He announces his decision to explore the world and give D.B. Cooper a proper burial. As the friends open the bag, they discover a surprise hidden between Cooper's parachute, $100,000 in cash. They believed all the money was burned, but the hijacker had kept Dell's share safe. Tom suggests splitting the money equally among them, but his friends insist on giving it all to him. Dan jokingly claims it as his payment for their fishing bet, but Tom reminds him that the wager also included his prized possessions, and he intends to collect his winnings. Sometime later, Denise is in the process of moving when she hears the new answering machine message. To her surprise, it's a romantic message that ends with a marriage proposal from Jerry. Overjoyed, she happily accepts the proposal. At Fort Cooper, Dan has found love with Flower, adopting her incredible feat dexterity. Meanwhile, Tom is at a Boy Scout retreat. Despite being free from debt, he continues to lie through his teeth, narrating an over-dramatized version of his adventure. It appears that some things never change for him. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.